okay so we saw the grid of resistors program uh, you know uh, pro problem set yesterday maybe we should just take a quick look at the picture once again so this was the problem you have this uh, you have this grid of resistors and you're trying to find the resistance between uh, points a and b and the way we did that was we have this uh, let me we start we, we had a we had this this matlab code that we started out looking at as 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 something that described the problem where you have these tensile operators here where you're updating the even even the odd odd and then the even odd and odd even pairs and the key point is is that the uh, the, the indices are uh, oh, which, which version is this? This is, this is the MATLAB version. So this is what we okay. showed yesterday. So I'm just going to go through, you know, how sort of this stuff runs now in Julia, progressively sort of doing so, different so things. So the indices are vectors, and so the, the it's, it's forming a subarray of B on the left-hand side of the vector. Yeah. Right. So this is, and yeah. On the so right-hand side, it's a matrix that's being produced. So in, in this code, well, let's look at the Julia code rather than MATLAB code. That's more fun. So this is the vectorized code that that people typically write for stencil operations. So this is basically just a translation of. This is yeah. This yeah. Just just give me a second this here. This is sort yeah. of meant to illustrate <coughs> just a few issues that have come up if somebody just were to translate straight that left to right. to so like, Julia. Like the parentheses become square brackets. You know, but you probably don't have the dot dot dot. <coughs> yeah. Right. So the the parentheses after the omega, the OM right there, is remains because it's just a. Yeah, it's, it's, just, just, it's just enclosed. So here they are parentheses, but here you you have indexing, so you have square square brackets. Function calls are, you know, like here, are, are parentheses. So. Okay, so this is this is the same code here. We have, uh, uh, you know, note that this is actually a script. The whole thing is a script out here. It's all in in one file, and there's no functions for computing anything. So we have this the we have this array v and then we have a bunch of the index operators which are ranges in in MATLAB these would have been vectors but in Julia they end up being ranges so just you know if I had to show you that you already saw that yesterday but let's say if n was a hundred then this would have been this whereas in MATLAB you'd have something like that. And then you go through the iterations on the left hand side you're assigning into the evens evens and on the right hand side you're applying this one minus omega which is the part of the method the over relaxation stuff and the existing point and then you're applying a scaled version of the neighbors so you're adding up taking all the neighbors scaling them and then add, adding them to the evens here then you do that with the odds and so on and so forth so each of the right hand sides here is actually a new uh, it's it's actually a new array a new two two dimensional array which is computed and stored into this left hand side so in this particular example we'd actually end up creating a lot of temporary arrays you know every time you do an indexing operation here you get an array you get one here four of these then you add them so you get a fifth one and then you assign that on on the left hand side and you do that four times so you're probably getting something like 20 temporary arrays for iteration. There may be more that I, I can't see right now. Jeff, is that, does that sound about right? Uh, what? The num uh, number of temporary arrays, I think each of these would be an array, right? Uh, yes, so yeah, yeah. I think it's about 20, 20 per hour, which is what uh, yeah. MATLAB also ends up doing. So if you try to run this, and let's take a grid size of 1,000. And we're just gonna do ten iterations, and you know, if we just run that again, we are we're seeing a time of something like zero point two seconds, zero point three seconds per iteration. Okay, so what happens? Uh, Remember that number, zero point three. What yeah. Was, what was MATLAB here? Uh, we don't have MATLAB anywhere to we actually done, try it out. We have compress them on the same machine. Oh. That that actually, it's in of itself, could be like a lab item. Or something. If someone has MATLAB here, it would be interesting I if do. they could. Okay. So. Yeah. Okay, so let's go from the vectorized version to the de-vectorized version now. 
and if you notice uh, you know I've, I've just kind of taken each of those each of those one line vector operations and replace them with a two dimensional <coughs> for loop so i don't i don't have these ranges you know specified up there anymore the this other thing like a matlab user cringe Right. <laughs> we spend all our time telling everybody to go the other way. Well, I mean, I don't especially like this because it does it does make the code all long. It is ugly. Here. Well, so that it's, it's not really a great, a good thing. Well, just bear, right? Just bear with it for for a moment. This is this is it's, not it's a the, step. <laughs> this is not the end of the story. The most impre the most in important thing here is is if you look at this function, right? If you did if if you did not put all this code in a function, all, everything would end up being a global variable and and the code ends up just being horrifically slower than even the vectorized version. So we don't really know what would happen if you disentangle the two things you just did. You devectorized and put it in a function. Yes. So in this step, yeah. let's just note that here, right? So devectorize and put the code in a function. Is, is there a short explanation why global is so bad? Yeah. Uh, Jeff, do you want to do that? The, the best explanation is that globals are bad. <laughs> uh, but it's true. But it's true. A const global is not bad. Uh, yeah. yeah. So yeah. The, main, so the main reason <coughs> is that you can't figure out the type of the thing. Yeah, it so it a, can a, a arbitrarily global, change as you. Yeah, so a, glo a global that's mutated is sort of, you know is something that could be sort of changed by anyone to anything at any time. Yeah. You know, any any function you call might change some global. So it's it's difficult to reason about you know, both for the computer and the machine. So you know the, the usual recommendation against global variables sort of applies doubly. Okay, so now we run the devectorized version, and you know there it is. It's it's a third it's, the time. it's it's taking a third of the time, and so this is pretty good. Okay, so then we go next to a version that I'm just calling stencil because I've factorized some code here. So all I did was in this version I've just taken the right hand side, you know, this whole expression that was here. And I just created a function called stencil and, and stuck it out there. So it's I've just refactored the code. So it looks a little better now. Notice that this is a lot less error prone than the previous version, or even you know when we had the fully vectorized version, because it, it's it's you know repeating code always creates errors, right? And often people think that calling functions, and this is true in many languages, that calling functions, like especially small functions like this. The calling the function call overhead is often higher than the actual computation overhead, and people try to avoid that. But sorry, stencil is a sub function. Okay. It's just a regular function. So this is this is a this is a compact function syntax. So you can just say. You probably could make it a sub function, but this. Well, if you make it a sub function, it's actually inter We we can try that out. It's gonna be slower. It will, it will be slower right now. Yeah, that's a, it's another thing on the. It's an optimization. List. But it, it but it's syntactically possible. Would there be an advantage in that version of declaring the OM as a const? I think const in, in this version, they're all inside the function. It's, it's inside the function. Oh, yeah, but it's oh. being passed to stencil every time. Oh, oh, oh yeah. Well, uh, that's it's probably uh, not a major difference. You can do it. No, this is the easy but, stuff. Yeah. No, I'm saying Pass, pull them outside before the definition of stencil. Yeah. Pa passing an extra argument is usually not like not yeah. measurable. So you, you don't want to do this, and then you want to do yeah. this? I was just wondering whether um, <coughs> it would be in line. Uh, it's, probably, it's, it's probably in line. So it's, yeah, yeah. Changing, changing that will probably not change anything. Okay. Uh, there's an end, yeah, there's an end in there that's, that's not defined. Wait. Oh, okay. I can just take this up there, right? Yeah. And again, you probably want to declare that to be constant, don't you? Can I can't do that, right? Oh, can you I? Can't, you can't assign it. Well, you only assign it once, right? So it's okay yeah. if I just do this here? Yeah. About the same. Okay, so if we take one more step, let's let's look at. Matlab is about 0.17 second iteration. 0.17, but on your computer, what's Julia like? 
Can you clone this repository, IAP 2003? Okay, so here now, instead of, in, now, now we get rid of those ugly for loops and we've replaced the whole thing with a comprehension on the right-hand side. So, you know, the whole thing is expressed much more compactly in one line, but we do have to assign because it, it needs to go into specific parts of V. So if you run the comprehension version now, it's somehow faster. Another factor of two. And I like the print as well. Is that because it knows the size ahead of time? I uh, can range loop in like a, the outer loop, could it be in a comprehension too? Um, no. That would look, that I don't no, think so. I don't think so because of the red black thing that has to happen. I mean, you could, but you're not really collecting values. Yeah. And oh, I not, see. Oh, just put really a bracket around. Yeah. Just I mean, you're, to, yeah, you're you could. Doing yeah, it, you're doing it for side effects. <laughs> Form yeah, you don't want side. A comprehension should just build an array, right? That's usually what you want. So each of these is building an array out here. So it's uh, you know. I get this version of two being about three times faster. So the interesting thing is here you are constructing a whole bunch of extra arrays now, right? Because each comprehension is actually an array, and here you have. So it's not strictly always the case that vectorized code in Julia is so always the slower. So is three times faster than MATLAB. MATLAB. Yeah. This and now we just uh, go to one more thingy out here. And I've taken the whole thing out. I've taken the assignment and the comprehension and put it inside a macro. Now, this, this can kind of make your code obfuscated, right? Because looking at this macro, it's, it's, it's kind of difficult to tell what the hell is going on. I, yeah, I would and this is not... A, I would judge this to be a pretty poor use of macros because yes. it's, it's clearer to just write it. Yes. Since, you're, I mean, since everything that's happening is just fairly normal, you know, function calls and assignments. Absolutely. So it's, it doesn't need anything strange happening. This, this, is just, this was just to kind of, you know, in, the exam, in, in yeah. this homework to kind of do something with macros, right? Sure. So it's, it's, it's a contrived use. It's not a bad way to just, you know, see a simple dollar sign at work, you know. See your dollars at work. <laughs> Change, <laughs> is <laughs> Change is not at all, so that's kind of not sure. <laughs> So we went from the we went from the fully vectorized MATLAB style vectorization version, which was 0.3 seconds, to devectorized, which was 0.1, and then we kind of kind of revectorized that code with comprehensions, but it was actually faster in this case, which I, was I didn't expect I wouldn't expect that. Actually. Yeah, I'm not sure why that is, but I mean we we know well, my hope is to gradually smooth out all these you know ways you can randomly change the program <laughs> and get performance. But, you know, that's not a good thing. But when they're all pretty good. close though. You're, you're do, when you're doing the vectorized version, you're evaluating all these temporary arrays. Whereas when you do the comprehension version, you're just doing scalar calculations to put it into a particular. No, but array. it's actually every comprehension computes a matrix, uh, computes an array, yes. and it's getting so. So compared to the devectorized version, it has more temporaries. No, is, isn't there an issue of intermediate objects? There is. You do it in terms in, of the uh, uh, vectorized version. You're going to be creating a series of intermediate objects and then adding right. two yeah, vectors. That's, yeah, that's going on. to you have to put a vectorized version. You might get so better cache that. behavior. It could be something like that. Yeah, because yeah. it's writing all of the results all at once in a fairly yeah, it's, and it's, then it's, and then copying from your you know your temporary workspace into the. It into could be yeah, it could be something like that. Yeah. I think the interesting thing about this is that you know that you, you there are ways to get better performance and by often not doing horrible things to the code, like writing it, rewriting it all in C. So, so that's about it. Uh, are there any questions? Are you, this all code, all the code is checked into the repository, so you can, uh, you can just try it out yourself, tweak it, you know, like try taking the, the devectorized version and pull, pulling it out of the function and, and you'll see a dramatic slowdown, for example and then see if you can speed it up by putting a const in front of various things. Okay. There, yeah. well, the, what I was trying to get at with uh, uh, comprehension, um, there's 
there's many times that uh, people are trying to do delayed evaluation. So the Eigen C++ li library for um, linear algebra, you, it generates an expression object. So then if you're saying that you want X transpose Y, it doesn't actually create X transpose, it just has something that it says, oh, they use this in the transpose. Mm -hmm. And so it's not creating all of those intermediates. And that's the way that I view the comprehensions, is that you just say, okay, now do a whole bunch of scalar operations, which are going to be uh, accessible through registers, and you don't have to go ahead and create yeah, it's, all it's, of those. It's similar to that. Yeah, yeah it, it creates much fewer temporaries, right? The, it just creates everything in one shot and sticks it. Yeah, and it only goes through the loops once. Yeah. Rather than one time for each. The kind of interesting thing here was that you'd not have expected it to be faster than the devectorized code. I didn't so, expect that. Yeah, I, I was kind of shocked when I first saw that too. So, because it is yeah, creating yeah, right. more temporaries. Yeah. That one, so the comprehension version is doing four temporaries per loop iteration, right. whereas the vectorized version was doing more like 20, but the, the devectorized version was doing, was creating nothing. Yes. Okay. All right. Well, thank you. Thanks everybody for attending the first ever Julia tutorial. <laughs>